Well, once upon a time, I was scheduling a class. It was called Depression Forever. Nobody came. I felt very depressed about it, you know. Try to do some good in the world and nobody is interested. What I mean to say is depression works. And you just have to look around. There's many people where it works. And it's, it's fairly simple how it works. So I'll just explain to you first how it works. So whenever you feel like having a little depression, you know what to do. I mean, it's a matter of freedom. You know? If you want to, like, have a day off, have the perfect excuse not to do your job, then you just say, oh, I'm depressed. <laughs> so, but you can't really fake that, right? People will say, oh, no, you're not depressed. You're looking fine. So you have to kind of be able to, to really do it. So I'll just explain in short you know, how to do it. It's, it's fairly simple. So all you have to do is think about your problems. We all have problems, you know. So you just pick a few of them. You don't even need all of them, you know. It's just a few of them. And what you do is, is that you fully identify with those problems. You don't think, oh, I made a mistake. No, you think I'm a loser. That, that, that will really work. Because then you know you're not just going to make this one mistake, you're going to make many mistakes. So that's already a very good reason for being depressed. There's no way out. You're a loser. No? So, and then once you're feeling you know, a little down with that. You should not yet rest because, well, you have to watch out because hope can come. And, and so you can't believe in that, obviously, you know, there's no hope in depression. But still it will come and to be sure that you don't fall for it, what you need is a good addiction. That's what will really seal your depression so that you can truly be depressed forever. You just need an addiction because there's nothing better than an addiction to take away your self-confidence. Addiction means that you are enslaved to something, that you have no control over yourself. When this something comes by, you want it. Even when it doesn't come by, you think about it and you try to get it. So that shows you quite definitely what a loser you are. So whenever a little hope develops, you know, if you have that addiction, surely that little energy of this hope will convert into the desire for that addiction and then again you can feel depressed. So that's, that's really how to do it. That's really how to stay depressed uh, forever whenever you are interested in, in that. Right. So. so, once upon a time, and this is not a story, one of my friends, a good friend of mine, he became depressed for about three years. So obviously I tried to help him and talk to him about all his problems. And many people tried, <coughs> but nothing seems to work. The more we were talking about those problems, the bigger they became. And the more he became <coughs> depressed and he stopped working and he stopped coming out of his apartment and you know, so he, yeah, he was, he was in that, so he tried many therapists and they also were, you know, professionally digging deep into his problems and bringing it all out and it all became just bigger and the depression just became more strong. And then one day he went to another therapist, some lady. So she said, okay, you're depressed, well, what's the problem? So he explained to her his problems. And then she said, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I am a professional therapist. The problems that you have are problems that everybody has. There's nothing really like special I can do here. Dig out some, I don't know, childhood abuse or whatever, you know, that may be the cause of it. You've just given up. Stop giving up. 
only you can get you out of this depression. And he stepped out of the door of the lady's office and he was out of it. He really had understood, okay, yes, it is my choice. So whatever else I'm going to be explaining today about the you know, nice details that you know, are there about depression and, and how to get out of it, um, this is just what you have to remember. Nobody can help you. I mean, they can help you, but not if you don't help yourself. Not if you don't, first of all, say, okay, I really want to get out. I am going to get out. That you stop believing that you are a loser and that you believe that you can get out, that we are actually all the same and that we can all do the same things and that we can learn and we can grow and we can get out of all these problems and, you know, have a good life. That's basically how you get out of a depression. You know, if you don't have that, then you have nothing. Then no therapy will work, no pill will work, no, nothing will work. So that's, that's the, the main thing. I mean, I don't want to be like unkind to people who feel depressed. I feel sorry for them. I feel compassion for them. But I know that's not what is going to help them. I mean, it can help them a little bit. But what really is going to help them is actually to be a little bit strict with them. I mean, depression is like um, putting your head up your behind and then complaining about the darkness and the bad smell. That's, that's depression, you know. So that's maybe a little tough what I'm saying now, but, but that's truly what it is, you know. You can, you can have problems, but you don't have to swim in them. You don't have to dive in them. You don't have to, like, embrace them and think they're the only thing. So this is the main thing, really, that you have to understand. You hold the key, both for depression as for getting out of it. Like sometimes people, they can become depressed because they're in a situation and they can't get out of it. No? Maybe, you know, in work or in marriage or something, they're stuck and they feel they cannot get out of it, they become depressed. Same story. I mean, you have to tell them, forget about it, get out. <laughs> you can always get out. But they don't, they get stuck, they get, you know, caught in it and they feel they cannot get out, so they cannot get out. For 30 years maybe they cannot get out. But sure you can get out. So, anyway, but this is generally speaking, no? and now we can look at the details and the signs like behind it. So then we come to this rasa, this essential emotional energy which is called vibhatsya in Sanskrit and which has many translations but the most used translation is disgust. Like when you feel something dirty is there, your nose goes like this and this is disgust, you feel disgusted. So this is actually uh, the basic feeling because depression is a feeling. You feel like that, you feel disgust, you feel there's no solution, you feel empty, you feel that you are a loser. So this you can't help if it comes. You can't help that if such a feeling comes, like let's say you dropped your laptop and it's broken. Then that is what you will feel. You will feel, oh, God. No. <laughs> yeah. but the choice that you have is do you want to dive into that or do you want to just accept what happened and try to do better next time? I don't know, you know, put it with a chain around your neck or something, nah? uh, whatever, you know, make, make amends, but, but, you know, not to dive into it. And so, uh, anyhow, this, this rasa has many forms, so there can be like just a little bit of disappointment, dissatisfaction, for some reason. Um, there can be maybe shame, feeling of guilt about what you have done wrong. And uh, there definitely also can be quite a lot of self-pity evolving from that. Poor me. There's nowhere where the poor me ego is so strong as in depression. So, when it 
really becomes depression, it means it evolves from just a feeling to a certain psychological state of being in which actually the feeling of disgust is not the only feeling present, but it will definitely be the central feeling, the dominant feeling. But Raza science says quite clearly that it is quite impossible to stay in one and the same Raza for a very long time. Raza is a kind of energy. When you are in that state, the energy gets used, and so it gets used up. And at some point, you just don't have that energy anymore to stay in that mood, and then you need some other mood. So that's also interesting to know. If you're feeling a little bit down, know that this is temporary as long as you don't like dig into it. As long as you don't make it any bigger, it will also pass. But what people in a depression then do is that for just a short while, they go to another negative feeling. Like maybe they will go to fear. Very often they will go to fear. Because when we are in a depression, we don't do our job. We basically don't take care for our things. So then at some point fear will come for the consequences of our actions. So then we stay in this fear for a little while. That energy also gets used up. Then we can again jump back into our depression. Or maybe a little sadness <coughs> will come. Feeling of loneliness or something, you know. Uh, anger, not so easy in depression, but it can come, but not so easy because basically you are angry at yourself and it becomes more difficult to be angry at other people. So basically it is a state of low energy, of dull energy and uh, it can definitely also make a person rather vulgar. If it is continued, this will make the person quite disgusting to other people also. Because this person will lose all values, will lose all worth, will lose all interest, and will just, you know, do whatever it pleases because anyhow it doesn't believe in anything anymore and it definitely doesn't believe in, in him or her herself. So even uh, like certain crimes that are really quite like over the top are associated with this state of depression. I, um, like, you know, you can steal because you are hungry. This is one kind of crime, which is very different than, you know, you're just killing somebody not because you need to, but because somehow you want to. This is all coming out of this same rasa. So some of the main, uh, like, spectacular crimes are coming out of, of this feeling. Basically, that is what is at, at the basis of it. But of course, most people who are depressed, they are basically trying to remain relatively nice to people. They don't want to annoy other people with their problem. They just stay with it themselves and feel bad about themselves. That's what, what happens to, to most people. But so the essence of it is <coughs> negative identification. You have a problem and you feel that you are this problem. You feel that this problem is attached to you and that you cannot let it go. And precisely because that is what you think, you cannot let it go. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy of the wrong kind. <laughs> there are many of the good kind, but uh, it's a belief. Like any religious belief, it is also a belief, but a very negative kind of belief. A belief that you are useless, a belief that you are maybe a bad person and that this will never go away. A belief that you are maybe a shy person and that this will never go away. And all these things, you find certain characteristics in yourself which may very well be there and you think that's it, that's how I am. So this identification is, is really a, a big problem. And what happens then, if we look at the uh, koshas, the different layers of consciousness, is that in depression, the ego has like this ostrich attitude, right? It puts its head in, in the ground. It no longer wants to be the king. 
Normally the ego is the king who is in charge. So the ego then becomes a little bit like a coward and runs away and leaves the country which is the body and mind which is the administration to run everything. Well, okay, if you know a little bit about mind and you give mind, you know, the job to rule things, then mind is not going to make, you know, a lot of sense. No. It's going to just want to have fun. And then that's also what happens in depression. People who are in depression, very often you will see that they are continuously trying to bombard themselves with sensory input. These days, usually TV. They just watch TV and watch TV and watch TV and they can't turn it off because the moment they turn it off, their problem comes back. Right? So they want to have all these stories and things and they're even bored <laughs> to hell with it. But still they are looking at it, still they are focused on it because they, they, they are completely caught up in mind. And the moment they would stop this input, their mind starts bringing up the real problem, which is that maybe for two weeks they have not come out of their house and not seen anybody and not done what they should do. So they can't really face it at this time. So mind just then feels, okay, why look at all these troublesome things and let's just enjoy ourselves. And that's also then, of course, where addiction comes in. No? Where addiction to TV, addiction to taste, no? many depressed people get addicted to sugar, sweet, chocolate, all these things, because also there the taste gives this kind of good feeling to mind so that the bad feeling a little bit like goes away. No? And then obviously drugs, alcohol, etc., they do that. So, uh, and as I said, this is then also another reason to remain depressed. Because you feel addicted and again you are identifying with that addiction. Addiction is all about identification. If you think you are an alcoholist, then really you are an alcoholist. I mean, at some point an alcoholist must probably accept that he's an alcoholist. But actually he should not accept that he's an alcoholist because then he'll remain like that forever. He should accept that he has an alcohol problem. He should accept that he has an alcohol addiction, sure. But not identify with it, not feel that is me, that is how I am, that is who I am. Because then he is stuck. So this then comes, a dharma comes. This feeling leads to a dharma, to going against your natural role. Do not go into the toilet when you have to. Do not, you know, to go against your body, to go against your relationships, to go against your job, to go against the law, to go against everything. Because you are feeling useless anyhow. You have nothing more to lose. You have already lost everything, so you don't care. No? So that is how you can really get stuck there. So, the true title of this class is obviously depression never again. So that is really quite possible. If you understand how this game works, then you can easily see it coming. This feeling may come. Sure, and in, I think uh, most people when they drop a laptop and it's broken, they'll feel a little bit like, mm. you know, that's natural. That's just your whole system which reacts to this little mistake that you make. But what you really can stop is to get attached to that, to go into that, to to dive into that. That is your choice. Mm -hmm. And if you make that choice, then you will really never be depressed again. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes we may feel a little tired. We may feel like, whoa, it's been a big, you know, difficult day and now my coffee machine isn't working and, well, can't it please stop? I need some rest. And sure, then you need some rest. Then you need to relax. Then you maybe even need some deep rest, but you don't need to be depressed. You know, there's a difference between deep rest and being depressed. Being depressed is not rest. It's just a bigger problem. Understand that, you know, this feeling only makes a small problem into a big problem and a big problem into a huge problem. So you can't do it. In, in Vedic uh, tradition, you know, there are many deities, many gods, and there are also many demons. And this demon of Vibhatsya is regarded as the most ugly, the most bad, the most negative demon of all. And I've seen pictures of it, it's really like a very ugly monster, you know. Some of these demons actually look quite good. But 
this one is really like awful. It's not helpful at all. You can say anger has a purpose. It gives you a little bit like fire to defend yourself if you need that and can't do it without. Okay, then anger has a little bit of a purpose. And fear has also some purpose. It makes you more careful. It maybe makes you do your job better or something. And sadness is also quite a natural feeling that you get when you have to let go of something. But this depression it has, is no use. I mean, okay, if you drop your laptop, you can feel, okay, next time I'll do better. And that's all you can do with that. <coughs> to go any further into the feeling is no help at all. It's, it's, it's just plain useless. Shit happens. I mean, it's, it's you know, except you know in advance that's life there's life and death <laughs> you might as well get depressed when you're dying no, what's the use you know that already now it's going to happen one day so why make a big thing out of it you know? so. so anyhow there's of course many different kinds of causes you can find mistakes made failure, guilt. But the truth is, there's no reason for guilt because we are all doing our best. Hmm? And I say that a lot. I say that a lot when we talk about anger also, that actually everybody is trying to do the best thing but just doesn't have the understanding or control to do it. But, you know, it's a hard thing to, to accept sometimes. But... If you look into yourself, you will feel that. You will feel that you've always given it your best shot, but it's not always good enough. Hmm? Let's say you have an alcoholic father who is not taking care of his child. Just lets the mother do it and you know, doesn't take care, knowing very well this is very hurtful for the child and things like that. But you can believe that this person does not want to do it differently. Because also this father is going to feel very hurt about the whole situation. But he just can't help it at that moment. He's trying, but yeah, it's not good enough. He doesn't have the strength, he doesn't have the understanding, he doesn't have the self-control, he's addicted to alcohol and what to do. Right? So, there's no reason to feel guilt for whatever mistake you have made. Don't look back. That's something my teacher often said. Don't look back. Just move forward. Mm -hmm. Try to do better, yes. That's all. You can do. And, of course, biochemistry also can play a role. And sure, sometimes even such a feeling can come and you really have no idea where it came from. I mean, if you drop a laptop, then you know. But sometimes you're just doing your thing and you're fine, and then suddenly you know. Usually when it's like that, then it's your biochemistry who is causing this feeling. Constipation is a major cause of it. Impurity of the blood, intoxication, maybe some pesticides in the food you eat, whatever many disturbances in the body can make the body feel a little depressed, like your body cells are going to feel a little depressed. And then you're also going to get this feeling of being depressed. And understanding that is also very important, because if you understand that, then you know, okay, this is just my body, right? I just need a little rest, maybe a little fruit juices or something else which will revive my body. Uh, some Ginger, for example, pepper honey mixture, all these things which are a little spicy are very good because they will stimulate your system to get rid of that feeling, of that tamasic feeling. Um, but basically, you just ignore it. If it comes just like that a little bit, or even if it comes because of some other reason, ignore it. Focus your mind somewhere else. Do something else. It's probably the right time to do something you like doing. Yeah? If you're feeling like that, 
and you don't really have to work, then don't work. But also don't, you know, lie down in a couch and, you know, like, and especially don't start, you know, right? Just do something really nice, something really uplifting. Visit some good friends, have a walk in nature, play some music, read a good book, read, look at a good movie, why not? I mean, but understand that this is a feeling which comes and easily it also goes. If you are making this little effort and you are not diving into it. So, sometime identification is so important. The moment that you identify with the depression, then right, you think something's wrong with you. And you feel, oh, I'm here again. And you, you, you identify with it, you attach to it. And from that moment onwards, everything will go wrong. And will further amplify that feeling and stimulate that identification. I mean, you've all watched like tennis matches. Yeah? On TV, I guess, you've seen some tennis matches. And that's so like easy, you can see that there. A player is doing very well and doing fantastic shots and then suddenly one, two, three balls, they go out just, you know, on the wrong side of the line. <coughs> and just because the player identifies with it and feels, oh, I should have done better, I should have made it, from then onwards, the game's lost. No? And sometimes then they can again, it's very beautiful to see that always, I feel, they can again get the courage and understand, okay, forget it. That's the thing that they learn. They learn to put it out of their mind and play it point by point, as they say, and, you know, just give it their best shot and don't get, you know, attached to the past. Don't get attached to what happened before. Just play it. And from that time onwards, again, it will go quite well. And then, well, depending, of course, on how the person on the other side of the net is feeling about it. And so that the whole game is really like a, ba a game about not losing that control, not losing... Uh, you know, your self-confidence. It's all about self-confidence. You know? So, I mean, some people get depressed maybe for some better reasons than others. I mean, let, let it first be clear that there is no good reason for uh, getting depressed. You know? uh, that, that really doesn't exist because depression doesn't help. It just makes the problem bigger. But I can understand some people may say, well, you don't understand my problems. You don't understand maybe what happened to me in childhood and the things that were there. Or maybe they are coming out of a relationship with a partner who was very much like oppressing them, making them feel small, making them feel stupid. Some people like do that. They All the time they tell their partner, you're stupid, you know, you, are, you can't do anything. And after some time they kind of get to believe that and they really go into this state of feeling, you know, that, that they are useless. And so that can be a little then more difficult you know, to get out of it. So then I must say, yes, you, you need to grow out of it. I mean, basically... The feeling, when it just comes to you, you can just step out. You can jump out. You, know. you just put it out of your mind and go somewhere else. And five minutes later, you will have completely forgotten about it. So easy it is. But if you've been in that state for a longer time, if you've been in that state for days, weeks, months, years sometime, then, okay, don't try to jump out of it because it won't work. Uh, I mean, it might work, I don't know, but usually it doesn't work. And it's a mistake often made. These people, they are sitting there maybe in their apartment, depressed and not knowing what to do, and then suddenly this little bit of hope that I talked about comes, and then they start thinking, oh, I will become this, or I will become that, and then they are setting the targets like very high, and they are very enthusiastic about it, 
and, and they completely like have to believe in this dream to, to, to do something and then five minutes later they understand. Oh. So don't try to jump out of it, but you can definitely grow out of it. It's a matter of building self-confidence. And the main way to build self-confidence is through discipline. 